Welcome to this TAS Academy HVAC training video. Temperature rise, how to measure it and why it's important. With technical trainer Randall S. Ripley. Many instructors and manufacturers have taught the heat rise method of checking heating mode airflow since the dawn of gas furnaces. It is, very it is a very reliable method of determining if you need more airflow across your heat exchanger or you have enough. Your filter must be clean and your gas pressure set correctly. Remember, the two-stage furnace must have both their single-stage and second-stage gas pressures set according to the fuel used. Refer to the nameplate or installation manual for details. The furnace must have enough airflow across the heat exchanger to keep the temperature rise within the nameplate rating, or it will trip the high temperature limit, shutting the burners off and continuing to run the blower to cool the furnace down. If you only take in one CFM, then you can only put out one CFM. Because a blower does not make air, it simply moves air from one place to another. It is impossible to put out more air volume than you take in. The air circulation blower must be set to the proper speed. According to the blower performance chart for our example, to keep our temperature rise in the middle of the temp rise parameters, 35 to 65 degrees at, at, point, at five inches of water column, we would need to have 1,291 CFM of airflow across the heat exchanger and a heat rise of 55 degrees. In an air conditioning or heating system, the BTUs of cooling or heating are delivered to the conditioned space by the airflow. If there is low airflow, then there will be low cooling or heating capacity. And depending on how low the airflow is, we can have evaporator coil freeze ups in the summer and a high limit switch trips during the heating season. Lack of airflow is the number one cause of heat exchanger failure. The biggest causes of lack of airflow, dirty filters, lack of return, undersized ducts, dirty secondary heat exchangers. Returns play an important role in airflow. Don't skimp on returns. Due to the cost-driven nature of our business, inadequate airflow is, more likely, is a more likely problem and is almost always caused by a lack of return air or undersized ducts. No contractor goes through a residence and says, I'm not going to put a supply in this room or that room, but many try to limit the amount of returns as you see in this example. Lack of airflow causes issues within the home, even if the central return is large enough. Why would this configuration be a potential problem? Uh, this causes a problem because the doors, <clears throat> excuse me, in this, in each one of these rooms without a return act as dampers. When the doors open, the air can make it back to the return. When they are closed, the air can't make it back to the return. The re the, therefore, the central return is not getting the return air from that room, lowering airflow. Uh, the, because the room pressure rises, and how does it escape the room? You know, some gets out under the door or something of like that. But for the most part, the room pressure rises. You don't get a lot of airflow in there, and you don't get any out. So just remember that a central return can still cause airflow problems. Uh, and as you'll see here in a minute, uh, opening, you know, it even tells you in the process of doing a temp rise to make sure that all doors are open.
before measuring the temperature rise. Drill holes for temperature probes. Open all interior doors of rooms that do not have a return in them. Make sure the filter is clean. Attach your manometer to the gas valve and adjust if necessary during the 10 minute runtime. Have your temperature probe or probes ready. Run unit for 10 minutes before taking temperature rise. In a gas furnace, the heat exchanger is 800 to 1000 degrees and radiates heat. This is why you do not take a supply temperature reading over the heat exchanger. So this is where we're going to take our temperature rise. And you see we have our two holes cut and out of the way of the radiant heat. The, name, the temperature rise rating on the nameplate is 35 to 65 degrees, as we see in the highlighted space there. So if we have a temperature, uh, you know, a supply temperature of 130 and a return temperature of 75, that gives us a 55 degree temperature rise. The middle of the rise, 50 degrees, is the object, the objective, but 55 degrees is okay. The reason we want to close, be close to the middle, is when the filter starts to get dirty, it will increase the static pressure of the system and raise the temperature rise. If your temperature rise is high with a clean filter, you will need to look at the following. Lack of return, undersized ducts, dirty secondary heat exchangers. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of our HVAC uh, training tips and videos, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. You can watch all of our Taz Academy videos on our YouTube channel. And if you have a, a, an idea for a video, please send it, including your phone number, to uh, my email address on the screen. Uh, maybe we can make the video, and if we can, maybe we will. Thank you.